This video is sponsored by Audible. Get your first audiobook for free when you try Audible for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash tech today or send tech today as a text to 500 500. Hey friend, Brandon here. For almost five months, I've been using the Google Pixel 3 XL as my main device. And there are many things to talk about in regards to it, but I'll be saving that for my long-term review coming soon. There's a lot to love about this device, but I'm dishing it for the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. Let me explain why, because this is Tech Today. The Google Pixel 3 XL has high highs and low lows. It has a fantastic camera that I absolutely love taking pictures with. It also has that Google-fied version of stock Android, which is really great. Those extra Google features like call screening, duplex, night sight, and the various other integrations with the Google Assistant is really quite awesome to have on a phone. But there's also some cons, and that's why I'm switching over to the Galaxy S10 Plus. And of course, it's a brand new hot device, so I need to check it out for that reason, but there's more to it than just jumping on the newest trend. Here's the reasons why I'm ditching the Google Pixel 3 XL for the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, starting with the battery. First, the battery life on the Pixel 3 XL has been a bit worse than the Pixel 2 XL that I had before. I often get the battery saver notification around lunchtime every day, which is really bad. In a way, it makes sense because it has a smaller battery than the Pixel 2 XL sitting at 3430 milliamps, which is kind of insane for Google to do. Like, why would you go for a smaller battery? The Galaxy S10 in comparison has a huge 4,100 milliamp battery, and I really want a phone that can last me a whole day without having any sort of battery anxiety. Only time will tell whether or not the phone has been optimized well to use that battery efficiently, so we'll see. The second reason is the speed. The Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus has eight gigabytes of RAM in it, while the Pixel 3 XL has um, four gigabytes of RAM, and it really shows. We've heard reports from Artem over at Android Police or Marquez Brownlee about how the Google Pixel 3 XL that they have has been uh, really slow and laggy. For me, it hasn't been the fastest phone out there by any means, especially compared to a phone like a OnePlus 6T, but overall, it has been fine, but has is the key word. The February 2019 software update really screwed it up for me. When I installed that update on the Pixel 3 XL, it became unbearable. It would lag like crazy. And apps would take seconds to load, swipes would just not register right away, apps would even close. And the thing that drives me the craziest is when you're just trying to type something and it's just not registering. You can just type something and then all of a sudden it just comes in all at once, maybe four or five seconds later. When that happens, I honestly just wanna grab this phone and chuck it across the room. I just hate lag. And in a way, the March 2019 update fixed a bunch of those issues, but every now and then I still have that crazy lag that drives me insane. And even if it was all better, I've been kind of primed a little bit to notice every little bit of stutter because was so bad before. So when I picked up the Galaxy S10 Plus and experienced how fast and smooth it was, especially after enabling fast animations, which you can totally find out how to do by checking out my tips and tricks video up here, the speed and smoothness is just insanely refreshing after using the Pixel 3 XL and its lag. But of course, we have to remember that I've been using the Pixel 3 XL for five months without a hard reset, and this is a newly turned on Galaxy S10 Plus. We'll see how well the software performs after a few months. The third reason is the display. While the Pixel 3 XL gained a Samsung panel this year, it is still fairly low quality compared to the panels you end up seeing in a Samsung device. Even though there's a Samsung panel in the Pixel 3 XL, there's still black crush and black speed mirror. It just doesn't look too great. And the screen isn't all that bright. And while the notch itself doesn't bother me and isn't considered a deal breaker, it's obvious that it's nice to not have it. And a little hole punch cut out is kind of nice. The only worry that I have is the loss of the wide angle selfie camera, which I actually love and use all the time when I'm with my friends. Unfortunately, on the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, it just has a depth sensor. There's two cameras, but it's really just doing one thing. You don't really get much of a benefit. Like how, how important is extra depth compared to having a wider field of view. And we'll kind of talk about the benefits of that in just a moment. The next reason is build quality. Samsung makes some of the best hardware out there, hands down. While I thought the Pixel 3 XL improved on its fit and finish compared to the Pixel 2 XL, because I don't know if you've used that thing, but the speakers would crackle, the screen would flex, there's just a lot of issues. So when I picked up the Pixel 3 XL, the fit and finish was quite refreshing compared to the 2 XL. And overall, I think the hardware is good. It's not something that feels super premium. It feels nice and soft, 
maybe, but not premium. The Galaxy S10 having that aluminum frame, the rounded edges, and the overall thinner size is really quite nice. It's actually kind of interesting if you think about it. It's thinner, it's more premium feeling. It's about the same size as the Pixel 3 XL, yet it has a bigger battery and a headphone jack. I'm not sure what Google's doing with this, but good job to Samsung for cramming everything into this phone. The other reason is to test out the Samsung ecosystem. In one of my previous videos, which you can check out up here, I pointed out how Samsung is really trying to build out an ecosystem, and I really want to check out parts of it, like how the Galaxy Buds work with Samsung devices. Apparently, it sounds better on a Samsung device compared to other devices, so we'll find out. And I also want to check out the Samsung DeX. In the past, I kind of dismissed it as something I would never use, but I've had people really tell me that they love it and it's been super helpful for them. And I even heard of someone who ran his entire company off of his Samsung phone and DeX. So because of that, I just had to check it out and see what the fuss is all about and if DeX is actually that good. Let me know if you'd like to see a video on DeX or not. And if so, what in particular? I kind of have this feeling that I might be the only one who's interested in it, but maybe I'm wrong. So just let me know. The other reason is the speakers. Last year's Galaxy S9 Plus had incredible speakers that just blew me away. I still find the orientation of the speaker is odd, especially having one pointing down, but despite the Galaxy S9 Plus having a down-facing speaker, it was leaps and bounds better than the Pixel 2 XL that I was using right before switching. So the Pixel 3 XL has great speakers in comparison to the 2 XL, but it has this hollow sound to it, so I want to see how good the speakers are on the Galaxy S10 Plus because I use speakers all the time. Speakers are really crucial for me, especially as an audio engineer. I know that I can use headphones or the Galaxy Buds, but I honestly I honestly use my phone's speakers more often than not. I'm listening to things on the speakers before I go to bed, while I'm brushing my teeth, when I'm taking a shower, cooking in the kitchen, among many other situations. It needs to be nice, loud, clear, and full sounding. And so far in my tests on the Galaxy S10 Plus, it sounds pretty good with music. And I also used to read a ton of books, but I haven't had much time lately to just sit down and read them as much as I used to. So in the new year, I've honestly been listening to a lot of audiobooks on Audible, which is really crazy because I've honestly been listening to Audible on my own at like two and a half speed every day, and now they are sponsoring this video, which I'm very thankful for. It's not too late for me, it's not too late for you to learn something new and become a better you this year with Audible. I've personally been really interested in the controversy of therapy and Elizabeth Holmes. So I've been listening to this audiobook called Bad Blood, Secrets and Lies in the Silicon Valley Startup by John Carreyou. It's a crazy investigative book on how she scammed investors of over $900 million over fraudulent claims of a device that would revolutionize the healthcare industry. I'm so fascinated by it, you have to listen to it. And just so you know, Audible also has exclusive audio titles in their Audible Originals library created by celebrated writers within theater, journalism, literature, and more. With an Audible membership, you get a free audiobook a month, 30% off regularly priced audiobooks, plus two exclusive Audible originals from a changing selection for free. If you don't like a book that you picked out, you can swap it out for another, and you get to keep your audiobooks to listen to anytime, even if you cancel your subscription. Get your first audiobook for free when you try Audible for 30 days. Go to audible.com slash tech today or send tech today as a text to 500-500. That's audible.com slash tech today or or send tech today as a text to 500 500. Thank you so much Audible for supporting this community and thank all of you who help support me by supporting our sponsors so I can keep making these videos for you. Seriously, try it out. It's free for 30 days and you know how much Brandon loves free things. So for the Galaxy S10 speakers, they've been really loud. So let's check it out real quick. An interesting thing that I just realized is that the back of it vibrates just like the Pixel 3 XL, so uh, it's not a, a weird thing. It's because it's glass and it's resonating. That's normal, I guess, now. The stereo spread on this is still pretty good, even if it has a down-facing speaker. It just sounds good overall. I think I'll be able to hear my audiobooks while brushing my teeth, and the music seems quite full. I'll have to compare it with some other phones, so let me know in the comments if you want an audio comparison test. And if you didn't know, and the reason why I'm interested in that to begin with is I'm an audio engineer, so I often set up PA systems or need to have music playing during an event. So having a headphone jack is uh, really nice. I can't tell you how many times I've tried to plug in the Pixel 3 XL only to realize that, that I can't because I, I need a dongle. 
Thanks for keeping that, Samsung. Of course, I also have to test out the camera. As some of you know, I really love photography and videography and even made a really cool video on the Pixel 3 XL camera. It's actually my favorite video ever. I'm the most proud of it. So you should totally check it out if you haven't or if you wanna check it out again. For me, I've loved the wide angle selfie camera on the Pixel 3 XL. Whenever I'm with friends, I use it all the time. The one thing that I really wish it had was a wide angle camera on the back. And then while the Galaxy S10 doesn't have a wide angle selfie camera, it does have a wide angle camera on the back. Why can't we just have both? <laughs> I have a feeling that I'm gonna use that wide angle camera more often than the selfie camera. I mean, let's um, just compare the two right now. So this is the setup where I sit, Pixel 3 XL. I'll take a picture with, wow, <laughs> that's a huge difference. Take a picture with a wide angle. And just for kicks and giggles, we'll do the normal and then the telephoto. So as you can see here, I wouldn't have been able to capture everything without this wide angle lens. This opens you up to a ton of creative opportunities and styles. So the question is, should I make some videos on the Galaxy S10 Plus camera for videography and photography? Let me know in the comments. So those are the reasons why I'm switching to the Galaxy S10 Plus. Let me know what kind of things you'd like me to check out for my long-term review and other videos for the Galaxy S10 Plus. Once again, thank you Audible for sponsoring this video. Please sign up for free for 30 days at audible.com slash tech today or send tech today as a text to 500, 500 Thank you for watching. This is Tech Today where I talk about the intersection of technology in our everyday lives, in business, and in everything creative. Until next time.